Welcome back to the Seaboard Central, everyone, in the November 2024 layout update. And there's a lot that's been happening on the layout over the past month, so without further ado, let's get started. First up is a new unit for the roster. This is a Scale Trains SD40-2 that actually replaced an older Kato SD40-2 that I sold off, which had the same number. This unit represents a group of seven locomotives that the SC acquired during 2012 from Helm Leasing, all of which have been former BNSF units. And what makes the 3013 and 3014 unique is that they still have their original BN paint schemes. And since I modeled the year 2015, most of these units haven't received their new blue and white paint scheme like that SC240 you see there in the back. And to me, that makes them more realistic. And it also allows for some really cool weathering effects to show an older, faded unit. So let's fire these two up and send them out on train 480. What's really cool is both of these units have different sound files. They were recorded from two different SD40-2s and have them perfectly speed matched and they run excellent together. If you look closely, you can see some of the weathering on the top of the unit. Another thing I've done is weather up a new caboose for the Seaboard Central. Technically speaking, these are actually shoving platforms, but I still call them cabooses. You can tell that this is an old BN unit that the SC acquired. Just for some long backup moves and maintenance away moves. Here's a shot of both cabooses together and you can tell that the older one is more faded than the newer one that's been touched up. Things like this make the railroad a lot more exciting in my opinion. We get one last shot of the SD40s and we'll move on to other things. Another thing I did this past month was add some more weathering to a couple of carbon black cars. And these are scale trains cars. I upgraded the uh, wheels to Tangent Cody 88 wheels, put some KD 158 couplers on it. And this particular car, I wanted to represent a car that was at the end of its uh, paint scheme before it was repainted by the company. So it's faded, it's showing a lot of rust. And this one that it's coupled to is actually starting to show some rust on its sides and the roof. Makes them a lot more interesting. Speaking of Tangent, these are two brand spanking new 4750s that Tangent has just released. And I got these in the INTX reporting mark, which stands for Interstate Commodities, a leasing company. These were actually former UP cars 
and I just looked, I found a couple of prototype photos of the exact numbers of cars that were running around during 2015, and I tried to copy the weathering pattern on them. What's unique about this particular car is they didn't patch out the UP shield on the side, so it still retains that old UP shield. You can see, if you look closely, where the INTX reporting mark is, is where they patched the UP logo out to put the INTX. Here you can see the bays on the bottom. I tried to weather them up. They even have some splatter. And these are awesome cars. Some of my favorite cars any model manufacturer has produced are these Tangent 4750s. They are almost excellent in my opinion. Something else I did this past month was actually paint the uh, upper level supports that sky blue color for this lower level scene. It helps it out a little bit. It's a really cool scene, even though it's uh, not going to be seen that much, but that definitely helps it, the appearance. Now, this is brand new from the last update. I've added another backdrop panel here, and uh, I will be putting photo backdrops here. So, but for right now, I do have them painted sky blue. I need to put some touch-up paint on them. And... The rest of the stuff I've been working on is the road bed. And this right here has been time consuming, trying to get this curve exactly right. So this actually involves an elevation and this is one of the tightest curves at 24 inches. But like I said before, it represents a leg of a Y. So Ys are known to have tight curves, slow speeds going around them. That being said, the goal for next week is actually to have track down. And the next week's video is going to be the inaugural run, where I am going to run a train from the lower section up the helix and connect to the upper level. So be sure to tune back in for that one. It should be very exciting. So I hope you've enjoyed this layout update for November of 2024. And if you have, be sure to give it a like. So until next time, I'm Tim Garland. Thanks for watching the Seaboard Central and happy model railroading, everyone.